<clears throat> the TV station has been at the mall for almost 10 years now, so I have to address the current tenants there. You know, the, 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 the concern of the tenants is what happens to them during this transition, because the, the, the general public has tended to shy away from malls in general, but because Eastern Hills has fallen on hard times, there's a conception out there that, uh, or perception that, that basically not a lot is going on. And the merchants who basically who are left are the ones that are the smaller business people, who most of their investment is, is a large percentage of their, their money. And, and so they're kind of nervous as to what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And so how do you address those concerns? What's gonna happen during this transition that is going to help those current tenants? How do you get the word out that they're, we're still in business, that it's a, it's a viable shopping experience for those right. tenants that are sticking it out and loyal? Mm -hmm. What's gonna happen? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, um, I think uh, Mountain Development Corp uh, is, is doing a good job of keeping the mall uh, filled as much as possible, uh, maybe not with national tenants so much as local tenants. And what uh, we have all recognized is, is the value of local merchants to the future of the town center. Um, it's the local merchants that tend to develop a loyal following, and we don't want to change that. We want to leverage that component and keep as many local merchants at the uh, new town center as possible because we feel that if we give them an even better environment to thrive in, they'll be more successful and that will also help attract some national tenants that would be new to the area. So, you know, we see it as a win-win a and we're very sensitive to uh, the local tenants. Um, and we're gonna be developing some sort of logistics plan uh, at the right time so that we can work with them and figure out a way uh, to make this transition as smooth as possible. Is Mountain Development going to be mostly in charge of that current tenants and transition, or are you going to have an active hand in it? Or? Uh, Mountain Development uh, really runs the, uh, the mall operations, mm -hmm. and our company, <coughs> Uniland, is really focusing more on the redevelopment side mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. But um, we both, uh, both companies are keeping each other in the loop every step of the way. One of the first uh, conversations we had with Mountain Development Corporation and Uniland um, was really centered around creating design principles. You know, what are the sort of enduring sort of uh, mile markers around which we think about creating a new identity and a new experience here? And I'll share with you on that short list, one of them is authenticity. And, you know, when we had our conversations about creating a very authentic Buffalo-based experience, um, local first sort of came up right away. And, you know, we can't be local, we can't be authentic if we're not local. Um, so we, we really have had a whole series of conversations um, uh, as a sort of combined design and development team about how to attract um, more local tenants um, to attract more local users and visitors. I think there was a time of development where you could go to create a community to scale and you could just do it with all national tenants. And I think that time is long gone. And I think we're all happy that it is. When uh, we toured um, a number of mixed-use projects uh, around the country, um, many, many large-scale mixed-use projects like this uh, of malls, con mall conversions, are essentially uh, a scrape of the existing structure and starting over. Um, and if you do that, that tends to increase your development costs because you're starting fresh again. We are really 
working hard to consider what parts of the mall are worth saving so that we don't have to start over and we can do an adaptive reuse of certain parts of the mall in an effort to help us keep some of those local merchants and attract new ones. How has um, local government played into it? Are they helping or just, just not getting in the way or, or how's that working? They're very supportive. Uh, the town of Clarence has been great to work with. I mean, it's um, uh, they uh, they keep saying, "When are you going to start? When are you going to yeah. start?" They are on board with the vision, and uh, they they just can't wait for us to get a shovel in the ground. So, I think they see the benefits of uh, having having a a place where Clarence residents can meet and gather on a regular basis and, and further this concept of community. Um, obviously, I think they also uh, recognize the uh, potential for new tax revenues from this type of project, especially their town planners and, the, and uh, uh, Jonathan Bloor and Jim Callahan and the town supervisor, Pat Casilio, they are very progressive in their thinking. And um, they, are, they are very um, willing to bounce ideas off us. We, I mean, we have, we're in contact on a regular basis. Um, have they come so up with any suggestions that, uh, you know, what they would like to see incorporated into the whole thing? Well, it's interesting because, um, we, uh, we got involved with uh, University of Buffalo, their School of Architecture and Planning, and um, their, uh, their real estate, um, uh, master's in real estate program. And they did a joint program with the students there to come up with different concepts for the town center uh, that were all student-led. Uh, and so four teams came up with different concepts and the evaluators included uh, Mark and myself and members of the town of Clarence, the, the planners, Jim and John, uh, Pat Casilio was there as well. So in the process of evaluating all of these student projects, uh, we learned um, that we all share a very similar vision um, but certain things came out, for example, Jonathan Blur, I remember, really wants to see a water element. He didn't mention a water park, Phil, <laughs> <laughs> but he did say, I'd love to see a strong water element. Mm. And, uh, you know, things like a focus on art uh, also came up. Yes. So, you know, it, it's interesting. We, that's, that's the beauty of developing something like this that it's it's not it's not like building you know just a single building <clears throat> we're building essentially a small urban village you know where people can live work play be entertained and it's just such a fascinating process to be involved in compared to what Uniland normally does how does this compare as a project well you know, the, the fundamentals are similar um, in that uh, we've got to do our market research. Mm -hmm. We've got to understand uh, our customers and what they want. Um, but Uniland has historically been more focused on where people work. And uh, with our residential and hospitality, where they stay and, and where they live. But... Uh, this town center project brings all of that together and, and adds a number of other puzzle pieces. So it's a process that where you, you put different pieces of the puzzle together and you mash them up and you try to create synergies so that they fit really well together uh, so that the whole is greater than you know, the sum of its parts. Uh, and finally, um, if there was one thing, one point that you would want to get out to Western New York, 
regarding this, one thing that you would want to get the word out, what would it be? You would want the people of Western New York to understand about what's going on and what's going to come down the pike in the future. Well, um, I'd love to say, you know, it's something exciting. Um, but I would have to say that these things um, are not built overnight. Um, Crocker Park, which is a project in uh, Westlake, Ohio, not just outside of Cleveland. Um, it's, it's often been used as an example of a good town center. Uh, that project um, is, I believe, in its 20th year now, and it's still uh, being phased in. Um, it, there's still land to develop. So um, there's a lot of excitement, and we don't, um, we, we'd like to see that continue, but we also uh, need to caution uh, people that to have patience because it's going to take some time to develop this in bite-sized pieces to follow the natural progression of the market. We can't build too much at one time, uh, otherwise it won't be financially feasible and successful. So we've got to start with one phase, uh, make sure we get it right before moving on to the next phase. Uh, so the word would be, I guess, patience, but we are working very hard towards starting.